get ready for that football show with those fantasy guys. Hello and welcome to that football show with those fantasy guys. And we are those fantasy guys. It is week number 12 in the NFL and week number 12 on that football show with those fantasy guys. Jay, we are approaching the end of our season. Uh, we deliver you to the playoffs, and then we take the playoffs off to enjoy our fantasy seasons. And we are almost there, Jay. This week and one more, and then we are no more. That, that's right. We've done our job. We've got you to the fantasy playoffs. Your job in fantasy football is get to the playoffs. We'll help you get there. What you do once you're there is kind of on your own. Yeah. Hopefully you've learned some lessons along the way, like look at the matchups and look for opportunity. With that said, let's take this opportunity to look at key injuries. You see what I did there? I did. I like it. All right, they are. Jameis Winston still injured and out for this week again. Jacoby Brissett, Jake Cutler, Devontae Freeman, Ty Montgomery, Orleans Dakwa. I'm not even going to try and pronounce his name. Robert Woods, Sterling Shepard, and Calvin Benjamin. Also on the list, Jay. Leonard Fournette, but I intentionally subtracted him because every time he's up there, you take him. So who's jumping off the list at you? I'm going to jump off the, the list. Some of this on up there. Chris Thompson, he's been on fire for the Washington oh, Redskins. He's out for the year. I'm not yeah. sure why he didn't make the list. He's not on the list, maybe because he's on IR, but there's the graphic and there's the, uh, the, the Chris Thompson highlight, and that affects fantasy players. Exactly. The guy you don't want to pronounce and Rob Kelly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, you don't want to pronounce him either. Uh, no, I with, was following with, your lead. <laughs> with that, let's move on to sneaky starts good catch jay i know you are chomping at the bit to get to last week's picks this week so please go ahead well what i tell everybody all year i tell you i tell all of our uh, dedicated fans out there everything that you do needs to lead to the playoffs to put you in position to make the playoffs and what I did last week is I put, told you a guy that you could go out and start and someone that was going to produce I told you the Bills D would provide the scoring chances and the Chargers uh, o would provide the opportunity and when you combine those two things what you get is uh, 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 Austin Eckler Great sneaky start. He did exactly what you want out of a sneaky start. He got a touchdown. You can't ask for more than that. And to tell you the truth, I'm a little disappointed guitar. he didn't do a little more. Oh, Bill and Ted's. Anyways, I told you to start Austin Eckler. Hopefully you did. You got a great start. You got a touchdown. You got some yards. You got some receptions. Put you in a position to win your game. And if you picked up and started Eckler uh, based on your uh, advice last week, you've got a number two running back, maybe a flex with a great schedule down the stretch. Again, opportunity and matchups. That's what we do. Jay, last week I told you to start Jamal Williams. Not as sexy last week as Eckler, but still 18 carries, 57 yards, four ca catches for 38 yards. Last week I said that Williams was gonna have 20 touches. So let's see, 18 plus four, carry the one. That's 20 plus touches, exactly what I said for 95 total yards. Look for him to continue being the bell cow in that offense with Montgomery's ribs acting up and no other running backs on the team. This is the guy moving forward. Again, not as sexy as Eckler last week. And also his schedule is not as good going forward, but he's going to get all the touches, probably yeah, that, 20 a week. That's a big difference, <clears throat> splitting time, all the touches. Last week, Eckler might have been a little bit better, but moving forward, I'd rather have the undisputed number one back than a guy that is one B, because he's certainly not 1A with Melvin Gordon there. Absolutely, I agree 100%. And with that, Jay, let's move on to this week's picks. How are you going to follow it up? With another home run. That's what I do. Uh, I'm getting with I'm, another touchdown. Uh, fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, we are getting in position. Everything's on the line now. We're talking about seeding. We're talking about making sure. the playoffs. We're talking about not making the playoffs. We're talking about bye weeks. You need every advantage you can get right now. And I'm telling you, a guy that's going to take advantage of the opportunity that's put in front of him, and that's J.D. McKissick. Oh, yeah, He's like going it. up against San Francisco this week. Seattle's going to be licking his wounds. They kind of puked away a game last week. They got to overcome some poor coaching decisions. But the Seattle running back position is a mash unit. Even with minus Chris Carson, there's nothing else there. I right. mean, 
The, the people are getting hurt, pulling hamstrings. Uh, this guy, and when he gets yeah, the ball, Eddie Lacy looks washed out. Oh my goodness, Thomas he, he looks forty. He looks he was forty. Last year. <laughs> I mean, they're terrible. Yeah. And this guy is nothing if not exciting. A shot in the arm, a boost Love of adrenaline. It. He's everything, and he's a former wide receiver in college, which allows them to put him out in different positions. Puts him in positions they can flex him out. They can put him in the backfield. I think he is going to be the shot of adrenaline that Seattle needs, and I think they're going to use the matchup against the 49ers to kind of see what they have, exploit some matchups, and then they'll feel confident moving forward. But this is the week that they're going to see exactly what they got. He's going to have every opportunity against a sad, sad 49ers. Yeah, I love the pick so much. I wish I had made it. Uh, it's fantastic because, like you said, well, you didn't say, but I will reiterate for you, uh, it looks like Russell Wilson against the NFL. He's got no help on the field right now, <laughs> and they need a playmaker, and McKinsey might be it. Yep. Uh, Jay, this week I'm, uh, I'm going to go with uh, – Corey, uh, excuse me, Corey Davis. A couple weeks ago, I told you to run out and add Corey Davis when he's, look at this catch. Nice oh. catch. Uh, go out and add Corey Davis when he's coming off IR. And he hasn't had that much success in the last three weeks. He has 23 targets for 103 yards over that stretch. And you might say to yourself, well, gee, why would I go out and start Corey Davis with those kind of numbers since he's been back? Well, here's the reason. Since coming back, he's played Baltimore, a great passing defense. Cincinnati, a good passing defense. And the Steelers, the best passing defense in the NFL. But this week, he gets the Indianapolis Colts. Sweet. And again, if we cannot overstate something more, it's all about opportunity and matchups in the fantasy football world this year and probably every year. <clears throat> but the Indy defense ranks 30th. They've given up 15 passing touchdowns, and this kid is getting 23 targets over the last three games. Jay, if he gets his share this week at Indy, this might be the, the, uh, the stepping game. off point yeah. for, for Davis for the rest of the season. This is the number one wide receiver on that team, not Rashard Matthews, not the tight end. This is the guy, and this might be the week where he shows it. I'm willing to roll the dice on him this week. If you've got a tough matchup from somebody else, a hurt wide receiver, a suspended wide receiver, or you're just scrambling, like you said, trying to make a push off, playoff push, trust your instincts, take some chances. If it doesn't work out, there's always next year. It's not very comforting to hear. There's always next week. <laughs> there's always next week. <laughs> but also, I, I want to take this opportunity to mention that if your team is not going to make the playoffs or if you get eliminated this week, do not quit because your team has uh, exponential uh, pressure on other teams. You could be the team that eliminates someone else from the playoffs, and that, my friend, is a victory. That is a victory. I love taking people out. I mean, I haven't done that very often. I'm usually <laughs> on the other end, but fair enough. I imagine that feels good. <laughs> I like it. Let's move on to tough sets. Sit down, Baldo. Well, okay, out of the box. Last week, I mean, you, I know you're more of the stats guy. You like to recite stats I and talk it. about stats. And I'm more of a, I saw the game, how it played out, and this is how it's going to work moving forward. I'm going to go with stats to explain my tough sit. <laughs> um, Dak Prescott. You happy to work this week. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I'm going to try some of your magic. <laughs> yeah. Dak Prescott was 18 out of 30 on for 145 yards, zero touchdowns, three interceptions, and a fumble. Yeah. That is straight negative points in any fantasy league. <laughs> I told you to sit Dak Prescott until further noticed. Hopefully you did. And basically, this is a tough sit until Ezekiel Elliott gets back in week 16, which if you're starting Dak Prescott between now and then, you're eliminited from the playoffs. You think so? That's, yeah. that's it. Yeah. If he's your starting quarterback, you're there's done. just no chance. Yeah, you're done. It, it was a fantastic. Well, get Paxton Lynch. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, I will tell you that uh, that this was a fantastic pick, and I was skeptical when you said it, especially against the game that we talked about might have a high over under. But man, the Eagles' defense just really put the clamps down and showed why uh, Dak Prescott might not be worth your starting lineup. Uh, Jay, last week I told you to sit Todd Gurley for like the third time this year. And again, I was right. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that made the difference is this fall into the end zone. Did you see that? It wasn't a rush. It was a fall into the end zone. Now, on the first drive of the game, the, the Rams looked unstoppable. They did anything they wanted to the Vikings, passing, running, and including this fall into the end zone. 
Uh, Todd Gurley, from that point forward, had 15 carries for 37 yards. Jay, that is putting the clamps down on Todd Gurley, which is exactly what I said was going to happen. Andrew, if you remember correctly last week, we told everybody to make sure they watch this game closely because this might be a potential playoff matchup, and the Vikings showed that they are the better team in the NFC than the Rams. So, with all that said, I'll take it as a win, even <laughs> though he got the touchdown, Jay. You can't argue uh, that that is a fall into the I end can't, zone. Uh, that's a touchdown. I it's mean, a you tough sit. I could trip into you, the end zone. Okay, let's let's back up. How many times have you said sell on Todd Gurley or sit Todd Gurley, and you've been wrong every step Not of the way? Run. Just admit right. it. This is right. It's a this touchdown. Is, this is this. You look at listen. Even with the touchdown, if that was a sneaky <clears> start, that'd be a win. Even with yeah, but because of the guys who are on sneaky starts are owned in less than sixty. But what I'm saying is, take the name off it. If you have a sneaky start that scores a touchdown, that's a win. You're out of your mind. Todd Gurley is owned in 100% of leagues and started in 100% of leagues. You expect more than nine points from Todd Gurley on a weekly basis. This was a good tough set. I will take it as a win, no matter what you say. Fair enough. Let's move on to this week's picks. All right. Well, let me tell you how you're gonna uh, do a tough set. I'm going to tell you show somebody. Me to, show, that, teach me. I'm going to teach, teach you me. how to pick. Like, just follow the example I did but last week trying. with Dak Prescott. He got negative points. I'm going to give you an another guy. Pick. Another so guy. So was Todd Gurley. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm looking at the opportunity in the matchup. This guy has a lot of opportunity, but the matchup is not right. Okay. The matchup is not right, and that's where the problem is. Larry Fitzgerald is a Hall of Famer. He's not like a Philip Rivers where he has no shot to get in the Hall of Fame. He is a straight first ballot Hall of Famer. The old man is still producing, but you better look out. They're playing Saxonville, the teal curtain. Call them the Thundercats. I don't care. Call them whatever you want. That D is nasty. They are going to shut down the Cardinals, and in doing so, Larry Fitzgerald is going to be shut down. He will not have a touchdown. If he does, I'm not going to come in here and tell you, oh, I'll count that as a win. He's not going to have a touchdown. He's going to have about... Three catches for 44 yards. That's it. Three catches, 44 yards. That's very specific. Jay, this week I'm going with Jordan Howard on the season. He has 198 carries for 841 yards and five touchdowns and is one of the very few bright spots on a Chicago team that is struggling. This week they are traveling to Philadelphia to take on the 9-1 Eagles. 9-1, that's a winning football game team, Jay. What wins team? What? Excuse me. What wins championships? Uh, defense. Running, running off defense. And oh, the, the defense on Dak right, Prescott last week. There you go. Yes. And the Philadelphia Eagles <laughs> have the number one rushing defense in the NFL and have only allowed 71 yards per game and five touchdowns all season. The the Chicago uh, Bears have no other options other than running the ball, and the, the Philadelphia Eagles are going to very easily going to be able to key on him, and not only that, very easily be able to score on the Chicago Bears, and that's not only going to take the running game out of it, it's going to take Jordan Howard out of it, and so with the exception of maybe tripping into the end zone, I think you should sit Jordan Howard this week. If he trips into the end zone, does that count as a touchdown? It depends. Okay. <laughs> it depends on the... I, I like your pick, though. I mean, for all the things that you outlined, I think the Eagles are going to go out there. They're going to smother them. Uh, Mitchell Trubisky has looked good at times, but the Eagles' D is very good yeah, most of the sure. time. Uh, there's going to be turnovers in the game. The score is going to be in Philadelphia's advantage, like you said, early in the game. So I love this pick. I think it's a great pick. Absolutely. Let's move on to Wall Street. One of the final chances you have to buy low or sell high on players. Jay, please take it away. Let me tell you what, right now, what are we talking about? Putting yourself in positions to win championships, to win playoff games. What do you need at this point in time? Because you're not going to go out there and find a starting this, starting running back. Nobody's cutting people that are you know, worthy of anything. You got to go out there and find yourself a lottery ticket. And we got a guy that has proven in the past to be exactly that. Mm -hmm. If you can go out and get Josh Gordon right now, you're going to have two weeks to see what he can do and see if he's going to be a worthy flex wide receiver two possibility in the playoffs. Yeah, now that's a little bit of change up. I wasn't expecting Josh Gordon coming from you. I actually have him rostered in one of my leagues and am looking to roster him in the other. So I agree. Josh Gordon, look, we talked about it earlier in the year, not Josh Gordon, but how fantasy owners have a very short memory. The last time Josh Gordon took the field was 2014. That feels like a lifetime ago. But when he did, 
the Browns quarterback situation was arguably worse than it is now. Yep. And he still produced 1,300 yards and 13 touchdowns in one season, not playing like four games. Josh Gordon is a, Lottery a ticket. phenomenal <laughs> talent at wide receiver. And if he can get beyond himself, will produce even for a struggling Browns team and can make the difference on your fantasy football team. This is the kind of guy that can put up 15 to 20 points per week in a PPR league without a problem. And, and you have a couple of weeks to see what he can do Absolutely. before you were, before you decide to put him in the game that counts. You got two weeks to see what he can do. And if he's producing and producing, if you wait those two weeks, you ain't going to get him. Yeah, I agree. I love this pick so much so that I, I flirted with the idea of making it my buy low, but I didn't <clears throat> want to alert people in my <laughs> league that, that weren't paying attention that Josh Gordon is coming back. So I appreciate you uh, blowing up my spot, <laughs> if you will. <clears throat> Jay, last week, Devontae Booker has had, excuse me, Devontae Booker has had 28 carries over the last three weeks. Just two less than C.J. Anderson. Denver is in the midst of a lost season. And speaking of loss, that's exactly how Anderson has looked most of this season. As a result, Booker is starting to eat into Anderson's touches. Over the same three-game stretch, Booker has eight catches for 68 yards, while Anderson has just three for 20. Talk about one-dimensional. We could be looking at the Denver not moving away from Anderson, but certainly moving towards a more run-heavy offense to protect their lack of talent at quarterback. Jay mentioned Paxton Lynch earlier uh, in the show. It just so happens that news broke today that Paxton Lynch may be the starter for this week. Does that change this situation? I don't believe so. Paxton Lynch hasn't shown much in his, in his uh, NFL playing time, but probably is a better quarterback than Brock Osweiler <laughs> and Trevor Simeon. Probably. <clears throat> that should only mean good things for Booker uh, and We've been showing you highlights of Booker, but we also have a, a highlight here or a low light of uh, C.J. Anderson. If we could take a look at that. This is C.J. Anderson uh, vis visibly upset after last week's game. Uh, he says that he's crying because he lost the football and cost his team the, the game. I'm telling you that he's crying because Devontae Booker is about to snatch his job. <laughs> so run out and grab Devontae Booker if you can. Get him on your team. This is a guy with a great matchup this week, great matchups down the stretch, and could be in line for that starting running back position, especially if C.J. Anderson keeps fumbling the ball away. I agree. I love the pick. You, you, you said you were flirting with my pick. I was flirting with your pick. So Fantastic. I I'm agree. glad we're on the same wavelength. Speaking of wavelengths and thinking, let's move on to weekly leagues. Jay, what are you thinking for this week's weekly week. I'm thinking about another lottery ticket. I'm thinking about matchups, and I'm thinking about the cost of a player. This is a guy that has been in the doghouse, but he's playing on Sunday night against a Green Bay Packers team that just got shut out in Lambeau for the first time since like 1996 or something like that. I'm telling you, for the price and the potential upside, I think this is the game Martavis Bryant goes off. Go and snatch him for free. He might only have two or three targets, but I think he's going to have two touchdowns and 89 yards. I love it. I love the pick. I think it's fantastic. Jay, with that pick, we are out of time for this week's episode. Before we go, it is going to be Thanksgiving in a couple days. I know that you're probably watching this after Thanksgiving, but I still want to tell you that I am thankful for a couple things. I'm thankful for our guest host, Rich Osterberg, helping us out. Thanks, year. Rich. I am thankful for having one of the best co-hosts that I could possibly ask for in Jason Walker. I am, thank you for our, I am thankful for our director, Patrick Snow. Thanks, Pat. I'm thankful for our wardrobe guy, George Cox, who had got me this sportful tie today. I am uh, thankful for all of the stations that air our show across the country. And I'm also thankful for all our Facebook fans out there who send us questions. If you have a Facebook question, look us up on uh, Facebook. It's That Football Show with those fantasy guys. Or search TFS. Look for The Shield and get us a question. That is all the time we have. Thank you, everybody. Have a great Thanksgiving. This has been That Football Show with those fantasy guys. And we are those fantasy guys. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody.